The Bongos are one of the wealthiest families in Africa, and by far the wealthiest in Central Africa, so it came as no surprise in 2017 when French authorities submitted documents detailing high-level corruption, embezzlement, and money laundering by members of the Bongo family, including Oli Bongo who himself has amassed a fortune of over 800 million euros, approximately a billion dollars. Ali and members of his family had diverted public funds through a complex network of financial transactions and deposited in overseas accounts. The authorities linked the accounts to the purchase of several luxury apartments in Paris and several luxury cars including several Rolls Royces and Bentleys. This corrupt behavior is typical of any ruling autocratic regime, however the bongos took it to a whole other level. In this video, we'll examine how the bongos came to power, their corrupt dealings, and how they were ultimately ousted in the recent coup. Before proceeding we'd appreciate it if you took a moment to like and subscribe as it helps more people see our content. Gabon's colonial history was crucial in creating the country's post-independence political scene. Gabon was a French colony prior to independence in 1960, which had significant ramifications for its political, social, and economic systems. Gabon, like several other African states, was under to French colonial power during the period of colonial rule, with French authorities controlling the region and its resources. Gabon's resources, including lumber and rubber, were aggressively exploited during colonial rule for the advantage of the French colonial authority and French corporations. This economic exploitation exacerbated the Gabonese population's income and standard of living disparities. The legacy of resource exploitation, combined with limited access to higher education and political participation for Gabonese inhabitants, paved the way for political unrest and self-determination ambitions. Gabon was no different as the quest for independence gained traction through Africa in the mid-20th century. The aspiration for self-government and the abolition of colonial tyranny resulted in the rise of political figures who would shape the period after independence. Notably, people such as Leon Mbie and Omar Bongo, who were pivotal actors in the early Gabonese political landscape, played important roles in this transformation. Gabon's colonial history, characterized by resource exploitation and insufficient self-determination, thus laid the groundwork for the complex political processes that emerged following the country's independence in 1960. Omar Bongo's early political career in Gabon was characterized by his gradual ascension via numerous government roles. Born Albert Bernard Bongo in 1935 in French Equatorial Africa, which included modern-day Gabon, he began his political career in the shadow of President Leon Mbie, who was instrumental in establishing the country's early post-independence politics. Bongo began as a civil servant and rose through the political ranks. Bongo's political fortunes changed dramatically in 1967, when he was chosen prime minister in President Leon Mbie's administration. This nomination was a turning point in Gabonese politics, elevating Bongo to the country's second most important politician. However, conflicts involving President Mbie and Prime Minister Bongo quickly arose. Upon Mbie's death in 1967, Bongo ascended the presidency, commencing his long and powerful reign as Gabon's leader. Omar Bongo's reign, which lasted nearly 40 years until his death in 2009, was marked by both stable politics and totalitarian criticism. Gabon had economic growth during his presidency, which was mostly fueled by the country's oil deposits. However, claims of corruption, political persecution, and a lack of democratic pluralism were leveled. Bongo's early career and subsequent leadership shaped Gabon's political environment, creating a complex foundation that continues to impact the country's politics today. Gabon faced a constitutional crisis with the death of President Leon Bo in 1967. Omar Bongo, the prime minister at the time, assumed the job of acting president. This transition was not without difficulties, as it was a watershed moment in Gabonese political history. Bongo's ability to handle this shift while maintaining political stability was critical to his ultimate ascension to the president. During this time, his leadership laid the groundwork for his long and significant presidency, which would shape Gabonese politics for the next four decades. In 1968, Omar Bongo attempted a massive constitutional revision in order to consolidate his power and legitimize his leadership. By abolishing the presidency and instituting a one-party state, this amendment dramatically altered Gabon's political environment. Bongo was elected president of this newly constituted single-party state, effectively consolidating his control. 
This maneuver gave him a tight grasp on Gabon's political institutions for the following few decades, marking a major turning point in Gabonese political history and defining the country's direction under his rule. Omar Bongo's administration in Gabon was marked by a long era of stability in politics and power consolidation. He ruled for nearly four decades, from 1967 until his death in 2009, and in him one of Africa's longest-serving presidents of state. During his reign, Bongo built a dominating single-party government and cemented his dominance over the country's political institutions. While his reign was relatively stable, it was also criticized for a lack of ideological pluralism and suspicions of corruption. Nonetheless, Bongo's long-term leadership left a lasting imprint on Gabonese politics and society, defining the country's course for much of its post-independence history. Following the death of Omar Bongo in 2009, his son Oli Bongo Ondimba took over as president, extending the Bongo family's hold on power in Gabon. However, Oli Bongo's accession to the presidency was tarnished by claims of electoral irregularities and fraud following his election victory in 2009. These claims cast doubt on his presidency's legitimacy, sparking protests and political instability in Gabon. The Bongo family's ongoing control, paired with these electoral issues, highlighted the complicated dynamics of power and administration in Gabon, where the Bongo dynasty had ruled for several decades. The extended control of the Bongo family in Gabon is representative of a larger pattern in Africa of political dynasties, where leadership and power are frequently passed down through familial relationships. This pattern has persisted in numerous African countries for decades, contributing to the consolidation of political power within individual families. Because they frequently consolidate power in the hands of a chosen few and limit prospects for political pluralism and competition, dynastic politics can have far-reaching repercussions for governance, democracy, and accountability. Understanding the dynamics of African political dynasties, such as the Bongo family's control in Gabon, sheds light on the challenges and complexities of democratic government throughout the continent. The Bongo family's long reign in Gabon has not been without controversy and obstacles. There have been periodic rallies and movements over the years calling for greater government openness, accountability, and democratic reforms. These challenges to the Bongo dynasty have occasionally resulted in political upheaval and, in some cases, government crackdowns. The legitimacy of their authority has been regularly called into doubt, with charges of electoral fraud and issues about the impartiality of the democratic system. As Gabon and other African countries battle with political dynastic issues, these difficulties highlight the necessity of democratic institutions, good administration, and the need for inclusive political processes that allow for a more broad range of voices and leadership possibilities. The extended leadership of the Bongo family has had a tremendous impact on Gabon's political, economic, and social landscape. On the one hand, their term has been characterized by political stability and economic progress, with Gabon remaining relatively peaceful in comparison to some of its neighbors. The country has reaped the benefits of its oil wealth, with Bongo regimes investing in infrastructure development and social programs, notably in urban areas. This security, however, has frequently come at the expense of democratic liberties and responsibility. To sustain power, the Bongo dictatorship has been accused of stifling political dissent, restricting press freedom, and manipulating elections. Corruption has also remained a problem, with charges of corruption and misuse of the country's oil income. While some parts of the population have seen their living standards rise, wealth and resource disparities remain large, and rural areas have not always experienced the same level of growth as urban areas. Thus, the Bongo family's legacy in Gabon is multifaceted, defined by both accomplishments and challenges, and it continues to be a source of controversy and discussion both within the country and globally. During his administration, Ali Bongo's health became a source of concern. The sentence indicates a stroke he had in 2018, which kept him out of the public eye for over a year. This health setback called into doubt his ability to govern successfully and sparked speculation about his fitness for office. The ambiguity surrounding his health produced a power vacuum, which resulted in a brief, unexplained military takeover, contributing to Gabon's instability. Fast forward to 2023, an Oli who ran on a platform of reform and change after his family has been at the helm of power for over half a century only to cut access to internet and run a massively rigged election with him emerging as the victor, 
and as you already know by now, the military was done with Bongo's leadership prior to Wednesday's dramatic revelation. Bongo's tenure was defined by disputed elections and a stroke that fueled rumors about his fitness for office and fueled a minor coup attempt. As he fought for a third term in presidential elections on Saturday, the 64-year-old sought to put his critics on the defensive. He went on a whirlwind national tour, made high-profile overseas visits, and pushed Gabon's credentials as a self-proclaimed forest custodian. Following a vote that the opposition claimed they had won, the National Election Commission proclaimed Bongo the winner with 64.27% of the vote early Wednesday. An hour or two later, a group of army officers delivered a televised address claiming that they were putting an end to the current regime, dissolving all Gabonese institutions, and declaring the election results null and void putting Gabon in military rule. The question we all have on our minds now is what next? Do you think Ali Bongo will be reinstated as the leader? Or for the first time in half a century Gabon will have a non-Bongo leader? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, also please leave a like and a sub as this enables our content to reach a wider audience.